What's the worst mistake you've seen someone do in their job? Plant manager let the safety guy go because they didn't believe safety was a full-time job and wanted to cut back on company spending and decided the supervisors could do all the safety audits, training, keep the building up to code. Not even a week later two guys got their arms cut off working on a machine that they weren't trained slash certified on and the back building caught fire due to pallets and cardboard boxes being stacked in the wrong area near the furnace. Update, the biggest question is where slash what company is this? This was over 22 years ago in Asia. I apologize for not remembering the name, but they went under shortly after. As the saying goes, if you think safety's expensive, try having an accident. I work in construction and the company I work for is basically a subsidiary of a much larger company. The bigger company had a guy almost killed when he got run over by a semi with a full load of gravel this summer. The site didn't even get shut down somehow. Before that a guy got hit by a passing car when he lost his balance and fell into an open traffic lane. Then at the end of the season another guy got burnt playing with gasoline and fire while trying to get asphalt off of some shovels. None of us can figure out how they haven't been heavily investigated. My only guess is that next year they're going to get a lot of inspections and I can tell you they will fail a lot of them. Working with a tree cutting service in Tampa, I was asked by the boss to ascend a nearby tree and cut some limbs. After seeing how close they were to power lines, I refused. He got really pissed off, yelled at me to clean up the area. Then he sent up Dallas. Dallas put on his climbing spikes, roped up the tree and started cutting. I was worried and kept watching him as I picked up limbs. Sure enough, he leaned back in before I could yell, put his sweaty bear back right against the power lines. A bright blue flash arced across his back and his body jerked away and slammed against the tree trunk. He bounced off and back into the wires. And again. Finally his spikes got dislodged and he fell out of the tree, falling until his safety line snapped taut, leaving him dangling upside down like a broken back doll. I thought he was dead, but a moment later he started moaning, then screaming. I'm on fire, he yelled. We lowered him to the ground to the sound of sirens approaching, a neighbor had seen what happened and called EMT. A nasty black mark curved across his back and the current had surged down his legs and through his boot heels, seeking out ground. Both his heels were blown out. I quit at the end of the day. I worked for a tree company too, and my boss was fond of cutting costs as much as possible. One day we had two pin oaks to cut down that were 140 feet tall, he wanted it done in two days but obviously these were going to be multi-day trees to cut down. We got most of the branches off one and my boss decides to cut it at the base without topping it in a backyard that was way too small. Sure as shit once the tree started to go it smashed the neighbor's fence and tree line and we left for the day so the insurance adjuster could come out and quote a price for damages. I left about a week later and about a month ago I heard that one of the guys from that crew almost died cutting down a cottonwood with that same crew, it was a damn good thing I left when I did. My dad and I were cutting one of our, house-sized, trees down last year. We cut all the branches down that overhang our garden. We then began to cut at the base of the tree. Just before it fell, I realized the branches that we hadn't cut off would pull the falling tree over into a neighboring garden. Sure enough it fell that way and smashed through a fence while with it. We used his car to, slowly, pull the tree into our garden and how to remedy the new fence issue. When the owners of the property the tree fell and got back, they were glad because they weren't a fan of the tree either because they had already ordered a new fence to replace the now smashed one. So we had effectively done them two favors. I worked at a car dealership several years back. There was a new mechanic who was there barely a week, and tasked to go fill all the brand new, top of the line, biggest diesel trucks on the lot. Diesel. The guy filled all the trucks with regular gas. At the gas station down the street. Then drove them back to the lot. He was fired pretty quickly after that. Man I used to love working at a dealership. I'd take the most expensive cars for lunch runs etc lol. Ha 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 same. I used to take the deposits to the bank and PPW to the tag agency, I got to drive a lot of cool stuff and got a pretty good idea of what I really like as opposed to what was just fun. Yup I thought I wanted the Corvette Stingray until I drove it. It was fun and the inside felt like a spaceship but visual while driving was terrible same with the charger for me and I wanted it so bad. On another note I can't believe it's only $50,000 now for the 2019 Stingray I ended up moving it for close to 90 at the time. Forget they had cocaine in their pocket while crossing a border. This led the Austrian border and customs police to open up about 100 cans of exposed film stock that was in the van the guy was driving. Film stock from a very expensive film shoot the week before. 
The result was second unit had to go back and reshoot an entire action set piece for the film. Line producer told me the mistake cost about 5 million euros. As a filmmaker, this hurt my soul. Not even a filmmaker but I would have been begging and pleading for them to wait to open it in protected conditions. <laughs> Saw a guy get zapped pretty bad when he stuck a tool in the wrong place on a big dryer at a hotel where I worked. We had asked him if he should cut the power first, and he said nah, don't need to. For a moment after, we thought he was dead. He was rebooting. This reminds me of a crazy story I heard about in Romania and thought it was bullshit, at first. Apparently this huge older man could take electric shocks with no problems and that meant he would work on electricity without cutting the power. I said in my head, nah bullshit. A couple weeks later there he was taking occasional electrical shocks with just a phased look in his eyes while fixing outlets. This dude was crazy. Wasn't very book smart but he was sweet as a kitten and emotionally intelligent. Spoke good English too. And German, Italian, and Russian. I guess he was book smart on second thought. We should upgrade our categories of smart. So few of us are ever in a position to discover our superpower. Somewhere out there a teenager is immune to the numbing effects of the Xyraxian Fuxilator beam, but that's being used 1000k light years away so she will never know it. Oh, another one. Worked at a large casino in a large tourist city. The penthouse garden was being redone, and the gardener has put tarpaulins down to protect the tiles. A storm rolled through, and the tarps were blocking the drains, so the garden flooded, back into the penthouse, down the lift shaft, and into the restaurant I worked. Chaos. Two years later, I'm working in a different hotel, same city. The restaurant had a fountain in it. I come in to open up one morning, and the restaurant is flooded. Gardener has turned on the fountain tap to refill and forgot to turn it off. It was the same gardener. In the ER, doctor wrote down an order for 15 mg of Toradol, anti-inflammatory painkiller, and the nurse I was training misread and started to draw up 15 mg of Haldol, antipsychotic. That's triple the standard dose for Haldol. This was for a patient with abdominal pain. The nurse I was training didn't question it at all. This wasn't a newly graduated nurse mind, just new to my department. Yes, I stopped her before she gave the med. No, she did not continue to work in the ER. At certain points in my life I have considered nursing. I love to learn, I like to help people, medicine is really interesting, I'm not squeamish, I can turn on sense of urgency movement speed, but I just know I could not handle any job where a minor fuck up can result in death. I think I will stick to jobs where misreading sloppy handwriting only leads to a silly story. Thank you for being there and handling it. Was waiting for my medical people to show up. Worst med error I saw was an ICU nurse who hung a 250 milliliters bag of meds that she thought was an antibiotic. So she infused it over like 20 to 30 minutes as in 4 piggyback. Except it was norepinephrine, blood pressure elevating drug, which is normally run in at a rate of a few milliliter per hour. Patient had a heart attack, a mild one, but still. The nurse was being super demanding and harsh toward me, in turn at the time, while I was trying to figure out why the patient's blood pressure and heart rate were so elevated, contacting my senior resident, etc. This happened right at shift change and the oncoming nurse figured it out. The nurse who made the mistake took the bag somehow when she left, turned off her phone, and basically obstructed any review of the incident. She was a traveler and her contract was terminated, not because of her error but because of the way she handled it. I have seen plenty of other fuck-ups big and small in my years in the hospital, countless in fact, but I'll never forget that one. An IT worker once sent an advisory to the entire company about an email several people had received with a malware link. She did so by forwarding the actual email with the link. I have a similar situation, corporate email blunders, that happened a few years back. Some woman sent out a happy Thanksgiving reminder email about some potluck she was hosting to our entire company, a global bank. An email that was clearly meant for a few of her friends at work, as it was a potluck at her personal home in upstate New York. Most people just deleted the email, but of course a few dozen boomers decided to reply all with please take me off this email chain which started the chaos of endless emails about this fucking potluck for like a whole week because these people just kept replying all asking to be taken off the email chain. Honestly, it was hilarious lol. Not sure if this counts, but during my first internship at a chemical plant I was given the task of reading through safety violation reports and sorting them. This turned out to be way more interesting than I initially expected as the reports were riddled with accounts of sheer stupidity in the workplace. Here are a few of the most memorable incidents. 
A woman accidentally glued her own eye shut after trying to reattach a fake nail with industrial strength heavy duty super glue and then subsequently rubbing her eye. Someone somehow accidentally mixed an acidic compound from an unmarked bottle into their beverage and drank it. Not as much stupid as it is fascinating, a man working atop some scaffolding forgot to attach his safety harness and fell from 20 feet onto his back. The report stated that he stood up, somehow okay after falling from that high, and came back to work the next day good as new. There was a company in rural New York in the late 1960s that took scrap metal, melted it down in big coal-fired crucibles and made home decor pieces, doorstops that looked like little dogs, bookends, that kind of thing. Not a huge profit margin but their materials were cheap and they had a steady market. An industrial consultant convinced them to transition to electric furnaces, significant upfront expense, but much lower ongoing operating costs. The consultant even designed the new electric crucibles for the company. The company president had been thinking of expanding operations, so asked the industrial consultant to double the size of the electric crucible designs. The consultant did so, but made a mistake with the cube square law in designing the supports for the crucibles. The first time the double-sized, but about four times as heavy, crucibles were filled with scrap and fired up they collapsed, flooding the factory floor with molten pot metal and chunks of wrecked equipment. The company went straight to bankruptcy. Now would that be fault of the consultant or the president? Because that's a fuck up. Small business owner, everything is the fault of the president. The consultant missed something that at least two engineers should have caught afterwards. My understanding is that the electric crucibles were designed, checked off on by the engineers who built them, then the change was made and the engineers didn't properly recheck and catch the consultant's error. Before retiring, I was a branch manager for my state's DMV. Suddenly, one of the other managers is off sick for a few days. Then it became a week. Two weeks. Then, the auditors completed their investigation, and she was gone. Turns out she was accepting bribes from aspiring truck drivers so they would pass the written test. She was taking in an additional $100, $250 a week. The dumb part? The pay was decent, and the benefits were fantastic. So she gave up decent pay, fantastic benefits, and a really nice retirement for extra spending money. Then there was the assistant manager who would pocket anywhere from $750 to $1,500 a week. So a better payoff. But she was removing it from the day's cash receipts. She had only ever worked for the DMV, working her was up from clerk. She had no idea that there are accounting systems within accounting systems. The bank would send over deposit discrepancy reports which she would blithely pitch, not realizing that the same exact report was also sent to our central office. The wheels of state government turned slowly, so she was able to do this for over a year, but once those wheels start, they do not stop. She ended up going to prison, and ordered to pay over $30,000 in restitution. The full manager also got fired because the investigation revealed that he was rarely in the office, and left everything up to the assistant manager. I worked for a startup cider manufacturer in my second year of college. Normally after a day of production we have to sanitize all the metal components in hot caustic wash. There are hundreds of pieces, so it takes a while. Anyways, our managers left us an hour before our shift ended to clean up. I had to go do some e-commerce end of day stuff before leaving so my coworker wrapped up the cleanup. On Monday we returned to the warehouse burned down. Apparently he left the caustic heater on all weekend and it caused a chemical fire. Everything was destroyed and it ended up bankrupting the company. He dropped out of his co-op degree after, he wouldn't be able to get recommended for another placement. I worked at a jail as a corrections tech. One day an inmate had an allergic reaction. This CO, let's call him Farva, came into the tank with the nurse. This is an open tank. There are 15 to 20 other inmates in there. The nurse decided to administer an EpiPen. Farva took the EpiPen from the nurse and tried to administer it to the inmate. Just to clarify, fully trained and educated nurse has a medical instrument taken by the biggest fucking idiot ever. He holds the auto-injector upside down with his thumb on the needle and plunges it into the inmate's thigh releasing the needle into his thumb. The CO is on the ground. The nurse has no extra EpiPens. The inmate is about to fucking die. The other COs are on their way but I have no idea how to relay what just happened. Luckily the nurse was able to go back to the nurse's station and grab another EpiPen before the inmate died. The kicker? Farva only got a warning. He almost killed an inmate. That whole jail was a fucking circus. Talked preschool for 8 years before the pandemic. It's protocol to count the children before moving from one room to another to make sure no one gets left behind. Had a coworker on her phone, didn't count kids, and had left behind a child in the toy closet. 
Kid was two years old and trapped, screaming and crying in a dark toy closet for 20 minutes before a teacher passing by the empty classroom heard her. My coworker didn't even get a slap on the wrist and management never told parents. This same coworker forced her class of two-year-olds to get dressed themselves for outside play in the winter so one time a little girl ended up playing outside in the Minnesota snow without boots on for 10 minutes before my coworker noticed. A local dealership was promoting a contest where they would give away a truck. I was driving around with my parents who were visiting from out of state when we hear the commercial for the giveaway on the radio. The drawing was in about 15 minutes, and we were right there, so we stopped in and put our names in the collection bin. I watched them take the bin upstairs out of sight of the crowd. They had clearly selected the winner in the back room and announced that if the winner was not present, they will contact them for the winnings. So they chose a winner. That was clearly from out of state. But what they didn't realize, was that it was my mom visiting for the weekend. She walks right up to the announcer, showed her license, and said, I'm so happy I won the truck. The look on their faces was priceless. For the next couple of weeks, the dealership tried everything to not give us the truck, it was clear that they had no idea how to even give away the truck. But we prevailed. And I'm happy to say it we love the truck. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you thought of the video by leaving a like or even a dislike. If you want more, subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications so you know when I upload a video. With that being said, have a good day.